This is the Duke of Wellington statue in Glasgow, Scotland. It always has a traffic cone on its head because the citizens of Glasgow continuously put one there. But who is the Duke of Wellington? His name is Arthur Wellesley. Arthur was born in Dublin in 1769. Despite coming from a wealthy family, he had a difficult childhood. His father died when he was 12 and he was neglected by his mother. He attended the prestigious school Eton in England, but he performed poorly. His mother withdrew him from the school after his father died. His father had left the family with large debts. Due to his failings at school, his mother sent him to a military school in Angers, France. Although he attended a military school, Arthur wanted to find a career in music. However, he followed his mother's wishes and joined a British military regiment in Scotland. At age 18, Arthur was given a high-ranking position in Ireland as a helper of the Lord Lieutenant. Ireland was under British rule at the time. In his early 20s, he held a position in the Irish Parliament for several years. His first military leadership role was in the Battle of Voxtel in Flanders when he was 25. He commanded a group of soldiers, and although the British and their allies lost, he is said to have performed well and learned from this experience. At age 26, Arthur was sent to India. He spent considerable time familiarising himself with the local conditions, culture and military tactics in India. In 1803, when Arthur was 34, he commanded an army of British troops and Indian allies against the forces of the Maratha Empire. Although Arthur's army was outnumbered, they were victorious due to Arthur's leadership and tactics. This victory and subsequent battles led to the dominance of the British Empire in India. Arthur regarded the Battle of Assay as his finest accomplishment on the battlefield. All the successful qualities he later exhibited on European battlefields were developed in India. Decision, common sense and attention to detail, care of his soldiers and their supplies and good relations with the civilian population. When Arthur returned to England in 1805, he was given a knighthood. His next campaign would involve one of the biggest power struggles in European history. Napoleon was the emperor and military leader of the French Empire when it took over large parts of Europe in the early 1800s. Arthur was a key British commander when Britain fought against France during Napoleon's rule. Arthur defeated the French at Vimero in 1808, followed by significant victories in Portugal and Spain, including the Battle of Talavera and subsequent victories such as Salamanca and Vitoria weakened the French army. In 1814, he was given the title of Duke of Wellington before he fought his most notorious battle. It was the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. The Duke's army was a mix of British, Dutch and German soldiers, many of whom had not seen combat before. Napoleon had an experienced French army. They had a similar number of soldiers. The Duke's army had 68,000 men, while Napoleon had 72,000. The Duke managed to fight a competitive battle using his lifetime of experience in war. At the end, he overwhelmed Napoleon's army and defeated them with the help of the Prussians who joined them. Around 50,000 men were killed or injured in the battle. This battle brought about the end of Napoleon's empire and was the beginning of peace in Europe for many decades. After Waterloo, he retired from active service, famously saying, I hope to God that I have fought my last battle. It is a bad thing to be always fighting. He moved his attention towards politics. By 1828, he was prime minister. He was very conservative, which proved to be unpopular and his house was attacked twice. Wellington had to install iron bars on the ground floor windows of his house to stop the bricks breaking his windows. This is what led to him being called the Iron Duke. However, one of his most significant acts as Prime Minister was the creation of a law that allowed Catholics to have positions in the UK Parliament and almost full civil rights. 
He held other political positions until he retired in 1846. He died in September 1852 after a series of seizures. He was buried in St Paul's Cathedral, London. The Duke of Wellington's name is where the name of the Wellington boot comes from. So there it is. The Glasgow Cone statue is the Duke of Wellington, a war leader politician from the early 1800s. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more.